I continued my travels along the cobbled roads that slowly drift into the dusty cart trails. I was weary and readied myself for any situation. Upon my chest, my medallion of the Inquisition was warm and hummed with the celestial magics that not even I fully comprehend. It was like a comfort of sorts. The night was soon blanketing all over Thymesia. There was not a cloud in sight above me, as the moon that blesses us with a guiding light and ethereal winds cast its light towards my goal, the forest to the south of the village. I paused and knelt down as I looked towards the small hoofprints that had been imprinted onto the dirt road. They were more like goat footprints or hoofprints. The most unusual thing that there was only two sets of these hoofprints, not the usual four, associated with these cloven animals. This made my mind wander back to the note I had found in Violetta's home, how she spoke ill about her own legs and feet. My mind ran numerous thoughts once again. Again I casted my mind towards the Chitonan, the hoofed and multicoloured race of the arid desert. Though their hooves are made to resemble that of devils or horses or regular cloven feet, not like these goat imprints I had found. Many in the church speak ill of these Chitonan. I once shared this sentiment. I no longer do. As I headed deeper along the darkened road, where no candlelight or torchlight guided me, only the stars and the moon above me, I heard an eruption of magic that immediately illuminated the forest with an energy I had never seen before. The forest bloomed with a fluorescent palette of purples, blues and other magical colours that I can barely describe. It blossomed new flowers and flora and fauna alike, all suddenly bursting out with a beautiful magical radiance. My mind ran wild, once again confused at the sight before me. It was an ill omen but also a welcome sight. I decided to connect the dots and the maps in my mind. This woman, Violetta, she was no devil dealer. She was one with the forest, a druid. No druid I had ever come across in my journeys has ever been a threat to me. It seems the town of New Crestil had some explaining to do. At the time, I was still in the air of caution, but, well, I had my doubts. As I continued onwards, and at the eruption of magic, the town behind me flew into a flurry of panic. The numerous torchlights that were beginning to suddenly sprout out as the curious town settlers, all of them rushing out towards their, well, town centre, beside the church, all of them gazed towards the illuminated forest in wonder and stupor, but mostly panic. This made me worried. I wondered what they were planning to do. I hurried my pace and headed deeper into the forest. This, this very moment, as I stepped forth into the forest, I began to question everything. For what I saw in this new blooming forest was more beautiful than any church. In fact, the Cathalgis itself could not rival the majesty of this wondrous forest. In the respect of the nature, I sheathed my axe upon my hip. It, well, made my mind wonder if I was going to be wielding a weapon that was known for cutting down trees. I doubt a magical forest would respond kindly to me. I sheathed my axe and reduced the size of its pole and placed it upon my hilt. The majesty of the fey-like forest as it hummed with a beautiful sense of magic that many inquisitors and in fact members of the church would deem heretical. How could anyone in their right minds find this lush, beautiful forest as heretical? It's astounding to me. The vistas of purple illuminated tree trunks with flowers that hummed with their own idyllic song. The water was a beautiful turquoise as it webbed and flowed from pond to pond. The nature of the night chirped and danced in the branches and the moss-covered stones. The smell, a sweet mixture of the finest perfumes, sweets, and relaxing incense. I felt calm, relaxed even. And this was no spell. 
No mind tricks. Just pure peace. At this moment, a small robin landed upon my arm, and it looked at me quizzically. Its beady little black eyes gazed back into mine, and I heard a soft voice. It was echoey, almost. You're a hunter, no? Do you come for her? The one that's frighted in the heart of this forest. Do you wish to make her prey? This robin said to me. Druid magic, no doubt. Or this robin was in fact the druid himself. In my travels, I had seen these Feyward-like magics before. Many used to shapeshift or metamorphose into various creatures, such as this tiny little robin. I looked at the robin and I responded. I shan't harm her. I only wish to speak to the one called Violetta. I wish to ask her questions. I am confused. The members of this town hailed her as a heretic, yet here I... I sense no danger. Was this forest her doing? All of it. The nature, the magic. The robin nodded its head and spoke once again. You are the first that has spoken kind words to us, Traveller. She is no heretic, nor is she a follower of that god of yours you call the Divine. And yes, she and I, together, have spent a long time guarding this forest, readying it for it to blossom, building a home away for our child. I am Zikos. With a whoosh of magic, the robin upon my finger vanished, and then stood before me was a human man, one dressed as one might expect for a druid in, well, shaggy clothes and mainly natural things. His expression was friendly and welcoming. I felt as if I could trust this man. I looked at him and asked, Pleasure, I am in... I am Victor, I said, wary not to say my title. Would you show me the way? I fear your spell here has attracted the townsfolk of Newcrest Hill. They come. Zekos looked at me, and his expression soured, as he said, I had feared as much, but come, friend, I shall take you to her. Along the way through the gentle grassland of the forest, up through the numerous streams and thick bushes filled with flowers I had never seen before, in a gentle creek sat a woman, holding a child, and not a babe, close to her chest. The child, I could see, was accurate to the notes I had found before. Horns. But they were curled, like a goat's. Not jagged and spiked like a chitonin's. And her skin, the child's skin, was pale and fair, just like the denizens of Foxton and Valpin. The woman was most clearly Violetta. She was ornately dressed for a druid, but as I gained more footing and gazed upon her, I had noticed her legs. They were furry, cloven, and goat-like, and there was a tail, a short one, but most certainly a tail. Upon her forehead, two horns sprouted, akin to that of a goat's as well. I know now she is a satyr a mythical satyr, both the child and Violetta. I felt my eyes widen as I made eye contact with Violetta. I was in the presence of a woman, a being we all thought to be mythic, and feared. But here I was, astounded to see one with my own very eyes. She was beautiful, fair, although slightly frail. She had a saddened look upon her face as she looked towards me. Come, come to kill me, Inquisitor. She asked shakily. There was a mixture of emotions of fear and anger. Zekros looked at his, well, wife, and then towards me in utter confusion and asked, Inquisitor? I remained silent, waiting for a better opportunity to speak if I was allowed to. Yes, husband. Inquisitor. 
his kind, his people that sailed far away to my true home. And they took us from our families, made us into attractions, into demons. The same inquisitors that killed my family before my very eyes. The same inquisitors that ransacked Seraphin. They took all of us, not just the satyrs, but the centaur and the minotaurs too. They wouldn't dare touch the Selathinians, the rabbit folk. No, they were too cute. But my kind were seen as horrid monsters, mutants even. Because of what? Horns, legs, tails, all of it. They hated us, Sekros. And he's one of them that hated us. I felt my stomach drop. At the time of this expedition, the one she had mentioned, I was not fully inducted as a true inquisitor. But I was a member of the church on the list, a young teenage boy, no older than fifteen. I was fully aware of what she meant. When the Catalogus sent out the inquisitors to set sail and find new lands to spread the word of the divine, many of these lands you know of, Koprash, Vosmana, the frozen south, and even the arid desert itself. And one of the lands included on this list was Serlathin. None of us had any idea of what lurked there. And when the Inquisitors arrived under the command of Arch Paladin Lucian, they were instructed to take them, all creatures, like the ones she mentioned, the centaurs, the minotaurs, and the satyr themselves. When I was growing up in the church, we had heard through the grapevine that the satyr were mythical and evil creatures that worshipped the devil, the arch demon known as Chiton. This was due to their akin looks to that of the paintings and interpretations of our devil, I suppose. Goat legs, horns, and tails. It is why the Cotonan are also feared and hated by the church. It seems that anything that is abnormal is hated. I was brought up to believe that the satyr wanted nothing more than to worship the devil and kill humans. I was fed a lie. I was indoctrinated into this hate. As to what I saw before me, I saw no devil, no demon, no malice, but a scared woman and a love for her child and husband. I was told, as a young inquisitor, if I ever saw one of these creatures, I was to cut them down in the name of my god. And so, I reached for my axe and unsheathed it. I looked towards her, making full eye contact. I witnessed the growth of horror and fear she clutched onto her child. Zekros rushed towards her side and readied himself. But I stood there, sweating, shaking, with a growing nausea that I could not shake, until I dropped my axe. The metallic sound rang out and echoed throughout the entirety of the forest. I took off my trichone hat and tossed it aside. I reached between my shirt collar, pulled up the chain that held my medallion, and ripped it off. I looked at it in my palm and dropped it to the floor as well. No more. I am an inquisitor. No more. I am not here to harm you, Violetta. My kind. We must be better. I said this with conviction in my heart. The couple looked at me in surprise and a heavy relief. I spoke once again. No harm shall come to either of you. None of you. Especially your child, Violetta. The townsfolk of Newcrest Hill are certain that you are heretical, yet here I see nothing that resembles heresy. You are a loving mother, and someone whose kind and history has been bloody and unjust. I am doing what is right. Violetta looked at me with a puzzled expression as well as a cautious one. She spoke to me and said, Quite the change of heart. For you to be a hunter and now soon to become the prey by the townsfolk. 
It seems your mind has been wavering on this for some time. Do I speak true? She was right. Incredibly so. Yes. Seeing this wondrous forest you've made. A secluded home for your child? You shouldn't have to live in fear because of some damned god. I witnessed how both Zekros and Violetta's body language completely changed to that of a relaxed state. Violetta then smiled at me with a teary look in her eyes and simply said, Thank you. Zekros turned to Violetta and spoke, Victor's right, my love. The townsfolk, especially now, will think those horrid thoughts. I nodded in agreement. The ones that are spread across all the churches, yes. You must hide. Get to safety. I was cut off by an arrow that whirled past my head and landed in a nearby tree. It was clearly aimed at Zekros but missed everyone. A warning shot. A heavy set of footsteps followed behind where I saw a face I recognised. My eyes widened as I saw the barkeep from the tavern. Violetta! I've come for you, my love, to say... To say... Oh, oh my God! What, what have they done to you? Your legs? Your, your child? You've, you've become a fucking demon! Violetta picked up her child and protected her. Eric, uh, no... I have always been this way. I, I, I'm sorry for lying to you. You could never know. We, we were never in love, Eric. I just needed a friendly face. Just someone I could trust in. You were the only person I could trust until... Until... Violetta just stopped talking. The sheer panic took over her body. I turned to face the barkeep as I witnessed his expression change from that of disgust to pure unhinged anger and he spoke once again so so you you mean to say you've looked like this hoods tail hooves and everything all this fucking time i probably use some magic shit to cover it all up so if you've looked like that since I've known you. I've been fraternising with a fucking succubi this entire time. And you, Inquisitor, I see you fall into her vixen tricks as well with all your shit on the floor. I know what I need to do. I stepped forward, arms raised to show a symbol of peace. I tried to come across as non-threatening as possible and spoke to him. Eric, is it? Yes. Violet, is it your name? Calm yourself. This es this situation has escalated tenfold. Take a moment to breathe, my friend. She is not a succubi, but a mother and a wife, and a friend to you. You don't want to harm her. Let them be. We must be better than the thoughts of those above us. Eric looked at me and almost snarled. Ugh! <sighs> What do you know? She's destroyed all my trust! Everything I could have had! Taken! Because she's a fucking goat devil! Now, if you can't complete a job, then I will. Without a warning, Eric rushed at me and swung his woodcutter's axe. I managed to dodge and roll out of the way of the blow. But the only thing that was caught was the back of my coat with a nasty tear in it. I leapt over and grabbed my axe as well and elongated the grip, extending it into a great axe. I yelled at Violet and her family to run, which they did with no hesitation. Eric and I dueled for what felt like hours, but in reality it was probably all of five minutes. We exchanged blows from time to time. This was until I was able to get a deep cut onto his gut. He retched in pain and fell to the ground. He writhed on the floor and gritted his bloody teeth. <sighs> Come on then. Fucking finish it. He said as I knelt beside him. 
It doesn't have to end this way, Eric. I can heal you. You can change your ways like I have. The church does not dictate our lives. We've been lied to all of our lives. Given false accusation onto those who are different from us. The scolded elves, the satyr like Violetta. You can choose to be different. I said, trying to see any glimmer of hope. But all I saw was a glossed over, crazed zealotry within his eyes. He coughed and grabbed my collar and pulled me closer, as if to try and bite me. But then he spoke. <sighs> Rot in hell. I unsheathed my knife, strapped my right boot, and plunged into his neck. He instantly released his grip upon my neck. I snapped my head round behind me as I heard a crunch of leaves as the woman from the bar emerged. Alicia? I asked, confused to see her. Alicia looked at me and nodded. Go find Violetta. I'll distract the townsfolk and send them into a completely different route. I nodded and rushed off in the same direction towards the family. This is where I found them, cornered by Pastor Gregor. Little did I know at the time how truly defended they were. At the moment, I thought they were doomed, so I readied myself and rushed down. But in a flash, as the pastor readied his short sword to strike a blow against Violetta, he was suddenly entangled by a group of vines that Violetta had summoned from the earth itself. He struggled as he was strangled, and eventually there was a sudden snap, and his neck was cracked, twisted, and broken by a singular vine. I headed down and nodded towards the three of them. Violetta stepped forth and asked, Eric, is he? I simply nodded in response. It was the right thing to do, Victor. He may have been a friend once, but he wished to kill me and my family. It was the right thing to do, I promise. Thank you again, but... Where am I supposed to go now? I can't stay here if the townsfolk are going to constantly ransack my forest. We spent so long in this place. Thymesia is a strange land that treats my kind poorly. I fear for my daughter's safety. I thought for a moment and rummaged in my bag and found a small map. A map that led towards Lockwin. I looked at her and said, Not all of Thymesia. Here. We'll head south towards the College of Lockwin. In fact, I shall accompany you there. Zekros stepped forward towards me with a smile, but a cautious one. Uh, not, not to be rude, uh, Victor, but uh, won't people know your name? Not your face, but as an Inquisitor, well now ex-Inquisitor, I'm sure your name carried weight. He was right. My name did carry weight especially across most of Thymesia anyway. I examined my clothing for a second. I dropped my torn coat and, well, revealed my chain shirt and leather tabard that resided beneath. I was well armoured, but I decided to ditch the inquisitorial clothing for good. I looked at them and smiled for the first time in what felt like ages. A true smile. You're right. From now on, call me Oliver. Violetta looked at me confused and asked, Why Oliver? I smiled. It was the name of someone very special to me. My son. There was a pause in the air. Violet had looked at me with a look, and we both understood each other. I lost my son. I swore to protect hers, and so I shall. She looked at me and said, Well, I haven't introduced you yet, but 
This is my daughter, Astara. She was a young T. She was a young satyr, her eyes crystal blue, much like her mother's. We all agreed that it was time to leave this forest behind us. Beautiful as it was, it wasn't safe for them to stay. With the guidance of the moon, we headed south, far south, escaping the boundaries of Foxton. I had left everything I knew behind. That night, Victor died, but Oliver lived. <clears throat> I am not disturbing you, am I, Oliver? Oh, um, not at all, Grand Master in Aldous. Not at all. Fantastic. Meet me in the front courtyard tonight with Irina. We have an expedition on our hands. Oh, and uh, Lecturer Violetta wishes you well. She's been too busy with the new students, but she's making fantastic progress. Thank you for introducing us to her talents and her husband's as well, Oliver. She's been a great boon to the college. I looked at Enoldus, and I smiled. Things are good here. It feels much better to not have those burdens on my shoulders anymore. My name is Oliver. I'm an arch lecturer at the College of Loquin and a spellblade. And this is my tale.